important was it mentally to overcome a lot of the things that went against you in the opening? Yeah, practice? this team just kept finding a way, you know, and, and I've got confidence in these players they are going to step up and, you know, we, we really lost T in warm-ups. Uh, we lost TB on the second play of the game offensively. And, and guys just stepped up, knew what to do. There had to be a lot of modifications, but but we settled in and found the, found a way to move the ball. And that's really because our defense allowed us to. You know, they gave us the time by limiting the points off the board um, to let our offense find a way, you know, to, to take that lead there. So really just good team effort of, of finding a way to win in December in a divisional game. Did T get worse as the week went on? No, T, we, T was good. You know, he, he practiced every day. And then really pre-warmups, um, he felt it, and and so he was questionable to play. He 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 found his way in there a couple times, you know, because there were some things that we were, we were still going to utilize him to do, even though he did it, um, some short area stuff. But but ultimately, we just uh, kept him out and and tried to get him ready. We didn't want that to turn into something worse, to where he's going to miss more games. So we'll see where it's at um, as the week goes. Any update on Boyd? I, I don't. He uh, dislocated his finger, and that's all the information I have right now. I guess so. T only played that first snap of the game. So I mean, what feedback did you get that after that first snap that you know? No, there was he. We didn't want him in the first snap of the game. He found his way onto the field. We had him dressed up in case we did some stuff. But T T wanted to play. T did not want to be held out of the game. Just with the information I got in pregame, we did not think want that to turn into something worse. Um, so again, he he wanted to play. I appreciate that. Uh, he found his way out there. You know, the way that some guys do when they want to play their competitor. Uh, but ultimately, we didn't want him out there. Two of your best players. Yeah. How much can you take from this? It feels like you guys just keep finding a new way to win games. How does that make sense? Yeah, I, I mean, there's not much we're taking from it at this point. You know, we're just going week to week in December and trying to find ways to win. And, and this team, obviously, we've played so many games at this point. We know that it can look any different way. And, and we just got confidence someone's going to step up and make plays. Today, we had plenty of guys around the team that did that. Um, you look at defensively, the, the rushing totals they had in the second half. Um, you know, it's just Jesse Bates with the huge turnover. I thought Cam Taylor Brett played really well. I thought all of our corners played really well. Eli Apple, Mike Hilton, um, Von Bell, all those guys. Really, our whole defense did a great job today. Zach, the flea flicker, was that something you saw where they fight hard on, on run plays and come down here? Do you think you could get them on that? And was that the right spot? To get yeah, I mean, you, you carry those because you think they're going to work. And, and they've done a great job. They're a fast defense. They come downhill. Um, they're good against the run. They make you earn everything. And, and sometimes those plays pop up and sometimes they work. Sometimes you run a reverse later in the game and they don't work. So, you know, it's, it can be hit or miss. Um, we understand that. You're rolling the dice sometimes, but we felt good about the look we might get and, and, and it worked out well. Zach, would you like to share where the play was going to go on the one that went to Jamar and he was looking downfield to throw and then... Yeah, uh, well, there was no throw involved there. That was reverse all the way. We, we had some, some uh, mechanical issues even getting the play off the ground. And so... Um, it didn't work. Feel-wise, when you called the flea flicker, when that uh, possession was starting, did you think this might be a good time to take a shot? Is well, we, we always we have a grouping of plays going into a drive. Um, sometimes it's a feel thing uh, as, as you get going and you feel like you're gaining an advantage in a certain way. Sometimes you feel like you're running the ball well and you can do some things play-action-wise to complement it. That's basically a play-action in a sense. Um, but it worked out for us on that one. Speaking of, of running the ball, nice to have Joe back. Joe yeah, it was good. I thought Joe, you know, he had a heck of a run, really, that uh, put us in a great position there. Um, when he broke that tackle on the toss play, great job. So just that combination of him and, and Samaj, obviously, is going to be a, a, a great deal for us going forward. Was there any major adjustment, you know, when you had to, anything major you had to do in the series about those yeah. guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, offensive staff meeting at 12, 12 o'clock on the dot. Um, you know, because you went in the game with two tight ends. And so that, that affected some things you were going to do with multiple receivers. And then you lose two receivers right out the gate, and uh, third down became a challenge. But uh, I thought our coaching staff did a, did a really good job. You know, first and foremost, starting with Dan Pitcher and Brian Callahan of getting that third down right, Troy in the red zone, James and Justin being on alert with all the things that they had to deal with in that game as well. James had two tight ends up. Um, so it was uh, – I, I just thought it was a really good team effort there, group effort by players and coaches to, to – to solve the problems. At noon, at noon when you found out about T. Right. How do you, when you lose Tyler, when you lose T, and the attention those two draw, you 
lose them and all the attention that zero is on Jamar. He still gets out and drew a 10 catches, 119 yards, and a touchdown. How do you scheme that yeah. up so he gets that kind of volume? You got to have a smart player, first of all, because if he, he's able to handle, uh, he really played all three positions, really. Um, X, F, and Z. Maybe he wasn't always called that, but that's where we put him. He's got all sorts of motions. He's got a lot of things he's got to remember what side he's on, to remember what part of the concept he's involved in. Um, but that allows us to just have so much freedom to move him around and find ways to get him the ball uh, because because of his his understanding of what we're trying to accomplish and, and his communication with Joe. Because of Tyler and T not being in the game, how much more did Jamar's performance impress you? I, I, you know, I'm always impressed by what Jamar is able to do with the ball in his hands. And if you can just find a way to get him the ball, um, he's usually going to be productive. And, and that's what he was today. Is there any significance on being a team that's, that's gotten the best of you the last, last five meetings? No, you know, we, we really just look at the next week and, and don't focus so much on behind. Obviously, we looked at that game and the reasons why uh, it didn't go well for us. Um, so we're fully aware of the style of game you got to play. It, it's a really good football team. They, they are. And, um, you know, so that was a really good win for us today. Again, it wasn't always pretty, but uh, we'll take it. And, and I'm really happy with how our players overcame some adversity. I know the, the touchdown la or the first down last week, the game clincher, the T was great. Like yeah. Burrow. Touchdown today. That window looked like it might have been tight <laughs> into Jamar. Yeah. Well, that's what you get for just repping plays over and over and over and over and over. You know, and um, we've thrown touchdowns on that play before. Um, T's caught some on a similar route, and and that's just timing and rhythm from the quarterback and the receiver being where he's supposed to be, and you feel the safety just just give you enough right before the snap, and you know where the ball's going, and, and he put in a great place, and, and Jamar made a great play there. So, uh, but again, that's that's the red zone. That's a play we've worked for you know since training camp. It doesn't always get called, but you still invest the reps in it every Friday. And so then when that moment comes in a big game like this, those guys are ready to, to make that play. Jack, what can you say about your defense? Uh, Nick Shell, 14 carries, 34 yards. Just yeah. The bottom of the it was awesome. And I think more importantly in the second half, it was maybe six yards is the information I had. And and that just, that's entire team defense. You know, I, I could go one by one and praise those guys up front and then second level and then the defenders. But um, that that's, that's an, and it's a great plan by, by Lou and the whole defensive staff. Um, so really, really proud of the defense today. Again, they, they gave us our best chance to win it, and then the offense found a way to, to overcome that adversity and score some points, but, but it really started with our defense today. On that note, just how impressed have you been with DJ Reader yeah. spotting more passes and even Sam Hubbard's ascension with how he's played this year? Yeah, I mean, you got to praise all those guys. DJ definitely stands out. Um, he gets his hands on balls and eliminates downs. Uh, he's just he's great in run defense. Um, he and BJ complement each other well. Those guys on the edge. I, I just thought our whole defense played great. Just real quick again, just because there's a lot of conversation about it. Why not rule T whenever if you run a 12, you know, that his hamstring might be an issue. Why not rule him out over that hour until kickoff instead of, you know, pressing him and seeing how he feels with him only playing with that one. Step? We already had five inactives. And again, we didn't want him to open up and run. That doesn't mean he couldn't run a goal line fade on the one yard line. So there was no sense in ruling him out. I didn't see any reason to do that. He obviously felt he could play. There were some plays we still had highlighted for him. I was hoping that the game would go in our favor to where we would not need to use that. That was really my hope as, as the ball was being kicked off that we could get a lead um, and, and not feel the need to put him in there to, to do some of the low red zone stuff we were gonna have him do. So again, that's, he felt good. He felt good enough to play, I should say. And, and so that's the position we were in. So after that, you had the new meeting with the Tyler Boyd. Was yeah. That yeah, we didn't have time to meet on that one. I know, um, but did that like, kind of ruin what you, like, a lot of what you had played? Yeah, it caused a lot. No, it actually. did. I mean, it was a constant conversation for four quarters of, of um, how that affects the game plan. And, and again, that's why you got great coaches on staff. And and I've got to focus on the game. I've got to focus on calling plays. And, and guys are feeding me calls as we get into different situations based on uh, their problem solving that's taking place behind the scenes. And, and uh, so, again, hats off to, um, you know, I, I speak a lot about the offensive staff because they, they did a great job on that stuff today. But but defensively, our, our coaching staff, you know, you look at starting with Luan Arumo and Marion Hobby and James Betcher and Rob Livingston and Chuck Burks and Jordan Kovacs and Louis Schofi and Mark Duffner. Like, they, they got these guys ready to play on defense. And these guys played lights out and gave us a great chance to win the game. And, and uh, really, really proud of the staff and the players for stepping up and doing that.